and first of all many thanks to the organizers because I'm really happy to be here to present my PhD work which is about um, the archaeological investigations of the late Iron Age settlement of Basel Gasfabrik and uh, perhaps you were wondering about my first title well um, perhaps you know that in uh, computational sciences people say garbage in garbage out which means when you have uh, garbage as input then you have don't have to wonder when garbage is coming out. So in archaeology I guess this is a little bit different I hope because we have a lot of garbage, dealing with a lot of garbage and um, we really try to, to get some knowledge of this garbage. So I will try the same uh, in, during my PhD work and also during my talk today. I try to, and this is why I brought with me an originally garbage bag from Basel and I will just put in some garbage during my talk and I hope that when I come to my conclusions that some wisdom is coming out. So <laughs> I just start with a, bit, a little garbage I have in my pocket. <laughs> Perhaps if someone else has something. Okay, well, let's start um, with the site itself. The site is in Switzerland, situated in the modern city of Basel in northwestern Switzerland. It is an unfortified uh, central uh, settlement of the light, late Iron Age and has um, two associated cemeteries in the north. It's quite close to the Rhine on the left uh, river bank of the Rhine River on the lower terraces. So you have um, Rhine terrace deposits. Um, the site was excavated during <coughs> nearly 100 years, so we have a lot of excavations, more than 100 excavations. Uh, took place the last years. So we have a lot of um, archaeological findings, of course, but um, all features we can imagine in a late Iron Age settlement in Switzerland. We have a lot of pits, uh, ditches, uh, kilns, ovens, uh, post holes, and of course, uh, these nice brownish layers, which are all looking the same, which are the archaeological layers. So I'm a little bit jealous about the preservation of uh, <laughs> the other se uh, settlement you told about because it's looking like this all the way in half. So, but I'm trying to do my best. Um, pits are very important because we have a lot of them, more than 500. And when I'm talking about pits, I'm talking about quite big pits, which are uh, three to four meters in diameter and two to three meters deep. And there is a lot of archaeological material in them, so uh, mostly, most of them contain hundreds to thousands of findings. And those findings are um, associated to, the, to a dark sediment, to a dark sediment of charcoal. And we also know from geological investigations um, that those pits were backfilled quickly. So this material was coming in quickly. It was not an open, an open pit, which was um, which where people throw in their garbage uh, over time. So it was really backfilled quickly. So um, the question was raised: where this material is coming from? This sediment, this dark sediment with a lot of waste in it. And this is uh, one of my main questions of my PhD. I try to figure out to, or to identify sedimentation processes in different um, places. So uh, I try to find out what sedimentation processes and ac activities can be seen in uh, houses, also in open surfaces. Then from archaeobotany and uh, stable isotope analysis, we know that, or we think that there must have been uh, something like intensive garden cultivation within the settlement. Um, then also animals or uh, what happens in the ditches or what is uh, the function of those ditches and uh, uh, what is going to happen in pits. Um, and overall I also wanted to uh, identify waste disposal practices. Okay, um, well I'm working mainly with uh, micromorphology. I also did some granulometry and geochemistry. And there are other people involved in this project. We have uh, two archaeologists and also archaeopotany, archaeozoology, um, palynology. So uh, a lot of data. We wanted to do this on a very well, um, well, in this case, perhaps not that well preserved, but <laughs> anyway, in most, uh, uh, in the best uh, preserved area of the settlement, which is in the western part, this is just a plan, you see two 
It's uh, composed of three different excavations. We have in red pits, in orange, those are ditches, and we have post holes in yellow. And uh, now I will introduce to you some features, and we'll talk about this pit number 302. Uh, there is a house floor, we have open surfaces in green, and I will talk about the ditch E. And we'll start with um, open surfaces, like, like this one here. I have many similar profiles, and it looks like um, very similar uh, activities. Uh, uh, I can identify um, very similar activities all over those profiles. So let's start at the bottom. At the bottom we have the natural loam, which is a bee horizon at that case. And it, this loam was capped by human activity, by humans. So I guess this is a leveling because in all profiles it is capped on the same level. So I guess this is a leveling about uh, over a quite big area. Above you have an initial trampling horizon. I have, um, I also guess that there is some accumulation due to trampling. We have a lot of uh, bones or some bones in it and those bones show a clear fungal attack on the surface. So it means it is really an exposed surface um, with tramping, which is not very, not very wandering because when you have a surface, you can't fly above, so you have to walk on this surface. And then we have a quite thick homogeneous layer, this is that one here, um, which is made up mainly by bee horizon material. So I think this is brought in loam, which was pro probably from uh, nearby digging works. Uh, after this, um, a mixture happened because I have uh, ashes in it. Oh, by the way, ashes. I can put also ashes here. <laughs> Garbage bag, um, ashes, but also fecal remains. Some hard. <laughs> put some <laughs> fecal remains in there, and I guess that this is happening because of tillage and manoring this place, because it is really a homogeneous mixture. Uh, perhaps I'm happy when all the people will have a look on, at the workshop on these thin sections, because it's not that easy. But I guess this could be tillage and manoring of this place. So I think that here w maybe we have this um, intensive garden cultivation. On the top there is a gravel layer, which is another story, which is a younger phenomenon. Okay. Then I have a house floor. Um, we have uh, at the bottom uh, loam. Here we have also an actual loam which was uh, capped at the same level. And on this we have a very extremely dense part which looks for me like a natural loam floor. It must have been in, inside a building because there is no evidence of uh, trampling on a wet loam which must have been which I guess I would have recognized. It is ex extremely dense, and the other thing is that we don't have any accumulation of material on the top of this loam. So this should be any part of a building, but we have no accumulation, no activity I can see. So perhaps they were very clean, they cleaned up the floor every day, or a day there were some mats on the, lo on the floor lying. So, but we ha can't say anything about uh, what happened inside the houses. So. And uh, on the top there is a backfill, uh, just <laughs> broth in material which was uh, generated somewhere else. So from, from the, well, I'll also put some houses in the garbage bag. Don't know what happened there, but so having a closer look to a pit, this is the lovely pit number 302, which has, uh, I had a a great number of samples, but only want to talk about this sample. Here you can see a darkish layer. Um, the primary use of this pit is unknown, I guess, uh, most probably a cellar pit or something. But there is a secondary use, and, and during the secondary use we can see an accumulation, a finely layered accumulation of dung ashes. Um, um, this is also uh, trampled, as you can see. So it looks for me like an oven rake out or something. So I guess that we have here um, an in-situ um, workshop or something, a workshop inside the pit. Uh, the upper part is also well containing charred material. So <laughs> probably in, in some time it will be a little bit, bit more precise with this charred material or something, organic material. 
Um, it is a mixture of uh, wood and also wood ashes which are coming and also dung ashes so it is the same also a trampled um, inner part of the pit also um, oven rake out but the fuel is changing we have uh, at the bottom we have dung ashes and then we have uh, wood so I will put some dung Fortunately, I didn't find real dung and some wood in my first bag and go further on with a ditch. Um, here is natural loam. This is a gravelly layer. Uh, here is a ditch with, which is infill uh, with a quite homogeneous loam. And this loam is, well, not very well pronounced, but it is uh, layered a little bit and we have a lot of uh, very tiny charcoal pieces and bone splinters um, it looks really like uh, inwash material which is coming from outside so I guess the stitch and all the other stitch I was had a look on them uh, they were ba uh, backfilled uh, naturally by inwashing material so yeah I guess that's the only thing I, I'm talking about pits so I guess I will do some water and a bit more garbage so Okay, we have some processes and uh, sedimentation processes and take activities. And now I try to do a settlement biography or at least the area biography. So this is uh, an artificial profile if you, if you want. So starting here and going through all those investigated uh, spots. And then it starts with the natural soil. Unfortunately, I forgot to put the A horizon here. So this is the B horizon. Um, and the sea horizon and um, when the settlement activity started we have a leveling of the whole area so in some parts we have the sea horizon on the top and some parts of the horizon which can be seen in all samples uh, then we have an initial trampling which occurs and we have a first um, sediment accumulation and there must have been a house at this moment because on the same level then this trampling horizon there is this loam floor without any <coughs> traces of activities um, then some features like pits and ditches were created and I proposed that the, the uh, excavation material was just brought out and on this later on probably there was intensive gardening we have and I also think that there is uh, manuring by ash and dung probably pig dung don't know perhaps I don't have no evidence of human but uh, it's very hard to distinguish and we have um, some activities <laughs> which uh, took place in um, pits so we have your wood and herbivore dung which was used as well we have the ditches which were um, infilled <coughs> continuously I have some evidence of uh, chicken perhaps because I have some uh, bird dropping and eggshells perhaps uh, there were some chicken as well and I don't know what happened here so I guess there was cleaning and they must have uh, deposited their waste material somewhere else I don't know where so I guess perhaps there was something like uh, a garbage heap or something so after the pit was backfilled quickly also the house was abandonment and there is nothing left from the activities inside the house and finally there is the covering with this thick uh, gravel layer, so this is the end of this first story of this area. So, settlement is gone away. And then, um, probably some Roman activities appear, but they are really hard to distinguish, uh, to, to identify. So, just have a look at the waste disposal practices. Um, we have domestic and economical waste, uh, some shards, bone fragments, slacks and everything. So I guess this waste was deposited on a waste tape or something and after it was used as backfill when you had to backfill some, a pit or something which was not in use anymore. We have ashes and charcoal which were used as manure at least sometimes. Then we have fecal, fecal material, fecal remains, we have no idea what happens with a human features, no idea. Um, we have some in some single, uh, probably human uh, coprolites in pits, but the pits were not used really like as like latrine or something. 
we have pick and dock features. We can see them quite often, and they were in, as a small <laughs> fragments in those probable intensive garden sediments. And we have herbivore dung, and which was used as well. So we have ashes, but we also have at least two pits where. And those two pits were filled with um, herbivore dung. So probably this herbivore dung was also stored in pits uh, as well, for example. Then we have a lot of excavated material because there are so many pits and ditches were dug. So there was a lot of excavated material. The loam of the Bee Horizon was used for ovens and also for ceramic. There is a local ceramic production. Then we have the loam of the sea horizon, which was used as top and also for ovens sometimes. And we have rhine gravel, which was uh, sorted. So sometimes you have in this, uh, those big pebbles, uh, which were used for stabilizing um, surface or something. So we can see a very specific um, use of those different materials, which is uh, quite interesting. So, well, I'm coming to the conclusions, and I really hope that there's something to press in my garbage bag or some wisdom I can take out. Ah, oh, yeah. Here's the conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, with micromorphology, I could identify some, some different sedimentation processes and also some activities. So this is um, really important if I want to try to figure out site biography or at least uh, the bio biography of an area of the settlement. Um, we s have seen some rearrangements of this specific area and those rearrangements were quite over a big surface so this was, uh, there was an idea and, and, and I think there was some kind of coordination. This was not just I'm doing here leveling in those two meters and on those two meters are doing something different. It was just really a, an idea and that coordination, I think. Then um, I tried to figure out some waste disposal practices. And this is very important because um, some activities we can't really, we have no idea what happened except, uh, for example, in the houses. It really depends how people manage their waste. So uh, some activities won't be, ever be uh, visible for us. Um, then I also could, can say that each material or each ware or each um, well, ar kind of artifact has uh, its own biography. For example, bones were treated different than shards, ceramic shards, and different um, kind of loams were treated differently. So I guess it's important to think about different biographies of, of those um, materials. And also the structures, we also have different biographies of stru structures. For example, for pits there is a first use, usually a cellar. Um, then we have sometimes a reuse as workshop, or they were partly filled and then used as workshop or something. Some of them were used secondary as storage for dung or, and other things. So there are quite different biographies of those structures. Um, well, the most important thing is I always have to tell the archaeologists that it is really important, important to know something about um, waste disposal practices to have a good interpretation of their findings. So we can't do an interpretation of archaeological findings when you don't, when you don't know what, uh, in what way they were treated. So, and with that, I finished in time, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.